genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. You've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe, used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com. Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We just had Paul Joseph Watson's article about cops inspecting homes without notice for illegal tenants. That's been picked up by Drudge. It's on the Drudge Report. Of course, this is a story we've been talking about where authorities in Long Island have launched a crackdown on homeowners who rent their house out to illegal tenants under a zero tolerance program that will see police conduct home inspections without notice, without warrants. Guess what, guys? If you don't have property rights, you are the property. You are a slave if you don't have property rights, okay? Get that, make that clear to people. And look at the way they spend this. This is why uh, Paul Joseph Watson picked up a, a quote from the uh, News 12 re interview with Mayor Peter Cavallaro. He said, permitting property owners to call the shots on rentals in their home would, quote, victimize the community as a whole. See, it's not about you. It's we got to protect the community. Those bad people with uh, private property, you know, they we can't let them make decisions about what they're going to do with their property. Uh, we need to just SWAT team them if uh, we even suspect that. We don't need any warrants. Uh, we're going to have zero tolerance. We've heard that before. We've heard zero tolerance. We've heard mandatory minimums. This is the same old stuff, the same tactics that have been tried with the war of drugs. At the same time, our government is cracking down on the war of drugs. They're also running the drug trade. Look at what happened in Afghanistan. They were down to 10% of the world's poppy supply used for things like heroin. After we get in, it goes to 90%. 
Look at what was happening under Reagan. At the same time, he's talking about a zero tolerance program and mandatory minimums. They're running drugs with the Contras to fund a secret war. That's the way this thing rolls. Just like this guy from California, the state legislator, who's the biggest gun grabber, writing all these gun regulations. At the same time, he's running guns and gets caught by the FBI. It's just amazing, the hypocrisy. I want to depart from what we've been talking about here for just a moment, about the uh, police state, about what's going on in Albuquerque. There were several articles today on InfoWars about environmentalism. And we've got James Lovelock saying that environmentalism has become a religion. This is a guy from England. He's the scientist who came up with the Gaia hypothesis. hypothesis. Now, of course, Gaia is uh, Greek for the Earth. It's the hypothesis that the Earth is a self-regulating single organism. Say so that the Earth is this living organism and humans are a virus. And as I pointed out yesterday, when I was in London with my sons and they were young, we went to the Children's Museum in the play area, they were running this virulent propaganda film. I, I recorded it. I've got to find it in my archive somewhere. It's kind of like um, uh, Busman's Holiday. I don't ever have time to go edit my own films <laughs> or the, or the uh, inclination to do so after I've been doing it here. But this was an amazing piece of propaganda portraying the human race as a destructive virus that needed to either be kept to a minimum, you know, like 90% reduction in population, or eliminate it altogether for the good of the earth. Now, the guy who came up with that hypothesis said that he was also too certain about the rate of global warming. He says, it's just as silly to be a climate denier as it is to be a believer. And he said that we should get our power from fracking and nuclear power. Well, maybe actually he does want to get rid of humans. <laughs> I don't think I would look at those as a way to go. It's interesting that they use the term denier because it is a religion. It's the same as calling somebody an infidel. And he says that. He says it's become a religion and religions don't worry too much about facts. And look at this report from Paul Joseph Watson today on InfoWars. Liberal fascist calls for global warming skeptics to be arrested. That's right. Burn those infidels. Okay, this is a, as he points out, Paul Joseph Watson says, a demented rant by Gawker's Adam Weinstein calls for thought criminals who question man-made global warming to be arrested and thrown in prison. Actually, we have some very compelling scientific data and measurements to back it up to deny that there's global warming. But anyway, this is what the uh, demented Gawker <laughs> rant said. He said, we have laws on the books to punish anyone whose lies contribute to people's deaths. It's time to punish these climate change liars. Those denialists should face jail. They should face fines. They should face lawsuits from classes of people whose lives and livelihoods are most threatened by the denialist tactics. This is liberal intolerance, liberal hate. Okay, this is the same sort of thing that we saw last week as arguments were being made before Hobby Lobby. We saw people like John Stewart coming out and ridiculing Hobby Lobby as Jesus Christ Superstore and saying, who are they to decide? You know, not only are they, uh, it, it appears that anybody, no matter how stupid, can claim a religious exemption. It's like, yeah, that's right. You don't get to decide, Mr. Stewart, whether somebody has a religious belief or what that religious belief is. That's what the First Amendment is about, is to protect you as well as other people. Voltaire understood that when he said, I may not agree with you, but I'll defend to the death your right to say what it is you want to say. That's what First Amendment and religious freedoms are about. You don't get to decide. The intolerant liberals don't get to decide. The intolerant conservatives don't get to decide. You have freedom, and only have freedom if you support that choice for other people. But going back to this whole thing about it being a religion and deniers being infidels, we can see this in the movie that just came out this last week. In Noah, another article from InfoWars, up from Michael Snyder. In Noah, the fallen angels are the good guys. He points out, in Noah, the fallen angels are good guys that were kicked out of heaven because of their compassion for humanity. They helped Noah build the ark and they ascend to heaven when they die, helping to defend the ark against a band of marauding evil humans. Darren Aronofsky, the director, stated that he attempted to make the least biblical, biblical film ever made. Well, I think he accomplished that, but did he really make anything that anybody wants to see? There's a director, Brian Gadawa, and he got 
a release of the script before it came out, and he was telling everybody that this really is not at all about the biblical story of Noah. It's about that being hijacked for a different religion, for an environmentalist religion. And that's exactly what it is. He saw it this last week, and he said, yeah, you know, I had a lot of people criticizing me because it was a preliminary script, and they said, oh, it's going to be different. But he said, yeah, actually, I was right when I saw it. And, and by the way, let me tell you, Brian Gadawa is a very good screenwriter. If you haven't seen his uh, film that he wrote the screenplay uh, for, To End All Wars, that's an excellent film. He, he said over and over again that he believes that all really good stories are stories about redemption, that they echo, essentially, the redemptive story of Christ. And he really does portray that in To End All Wars. It's a story that takes place in World War II. And he doesn't beat people over the head. He doesn't set it in a uh, Roman toga and sandals uh, venue. He's got it in a modern context, but the message comes across very clearly. I think everybody would enjoy that, whether you're a Christian or not. But his take on the Noah movie, he says, is simply ugly anti-human exceptionalism is enviro agitprop. In other words, it's environmental propaganda to agitate people. And he says that like the last temptation of Christ, all the controversy overshadowed the fact that it is just plain terrible storytelling. He said at least with Avatar, with its naked pagan earth worship, it has a ring of more authenticity than just trying to subvert someone else's sacred narrative with silly rock people and bad guys who cling to their guns and eat meat because they really do demonize the people who eat meat. Even though we see that in the, I've been told, I haven't seen the movie, I've been told that Noah is anti-human, he wants to get rid of the humans, even to the extent of wanting to kill his granddaughters on the ark because he does not want humans to continue. So a very, very much the uh, agenda that we see with Gaia and these religions, radical earth firsters who want to destroy the human race, as we see with things like the Georgia Guidestones, where they want to eviscerate the human population. And you know what? Maybe they'll get their wish. We've got an outbreak of Ebola that's jumping across the borders. It kills 90% of the people. And as the uh, eugenicist here in Austin said, as Alex has pointed out many times, he was saying that that's exactly what we need. We need an airborne Ebola virus to rapidly get rid of 90% of the Earth's population. AIDS takes far too long. We want something like the Ebola virus. And so uh, maybe they're going to get their wish. Who knows? It's something to look out for. Let's go back to your calls. Uh, we've got uh, Barry in Ohio. You wanted to say something about uh, Brave New World, I believe. Uh, yeah, actually, I did. And uh, it was kind of weird. As I was here on hold, I had a strange uh, confluence of uh, the two topics that you've got going on here. Okay. When you talk about uh, dystopic novels, mm -hmm. the most appropriate one is going to be Fahrenheit 451. Mm -hmm. Okay, in Fahrenheit 451, there are no doctors, there are no nurses, there are technicians. The machines do the work. There's no society. Everyone spends their money on video walls. <laughs> right? And everyone, everyone that can only talk about what they have on the video walls and they call them the family. Yeah. You know, that my family is on the video wall, right? <laughs> That's right. And everyone lives in fear of the fire dog, which is, of course, a robotic spider. Yeah. With a lethal injection, and they can track people by their DNA set. Man. Now, here's the important part. The uh, hero in the story escapes. That's kind of important, because they can get away with this. Now, there is a man that is killed for no reason. They sent the, you know, the dog out to kill a man, and the dog kills the man. It's not about the hero escaping. It's not about the man who dies. It's about all of the people that stand in line. You know, the people that keep their head down, the people that just want to get by, the people that just, uh, yes. you know, get on with society, that sort of thing, right? Yes, yes. When you look at the, the shooting out there in uh, New Mexico, you know, the, the gentleman, you know, was uh, doing nothing wrong. He lost his life. That's regrettable. The police are going to, you know, do whatever they do. But think about how many thousands of people aren't going to be in that park. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's uh, exactly, exactly right. You know, it is sad, isn't it, how we're living in this dystopian future. It's a confluence of a lot of <laughs> all the worst things that we've seen in the movies and books. I mean, uh, we also see the rise of robots and we see elements of the Terminator being planned by DARPA. I mean, it is, it's really frightening. But 
And we don't know what the future holds, but as many people have said, we know.